With Halo Infinite now being delayed into 2021, I wanted to go over my thoughts and why I believe that Halo Infinite is going to be a better game for it and what my hopes are for them to be actually making this game better. I will say though, that even though that a lot of us are sad that we're going to have to wait another year for Halo Infinite, the amount of OST releases that we're getting is amazing. The soundtrack in this game is beautiful, especially when you look at songs like through the trees that actually takes inspiration from Marty O'Donnell, A Walk in the Woods, and makes it something new and fresh and something that we all can reminisce on. So sit back, relax, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my thoughts on Halo Infinite's delay. Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room right now and start with talking about the graphics. The graphics were heavily criticized of Halo Infinite when we saw the gameplay teaser about a month ago, and I believe that they're going to put a lot of resources and time into changing assets and textures that we saw there to actually look more next gen like everyone was hoping to see. Now personally, I wasn't that distraught when I saw the graphics, I was more happy to see Halo and to see it play that way. But I will admit, there has to be a greater emphasis on their graphical department, especially when it's on a product, the Xbox Series X and Series S, that is being marketed as the strongest console on the market. To reiterate, that was the biggest thing that people talked about on Halo Infinite's gameplay, and I can see the potential of them ridding of the Xbox One versions of the game in order to upgrade the fidelity and the textures and the resolution of the game in general to suit it better for Series X and for PC. Now this would obviously take a lot of time to upgrade the models and the textures in the game, and I do believe this wait is going to be longer than seeing it released in Spring 2021. This goes to the fact that we saw a listing somewhere that the game would actually be releasing a full year later. This article has been updated and so has the listing to just be 2021, but I can't help and wonder if this will actually be the case. I for one am okay with however long this game takes, but I do want to say that if it does come out later than spring 2021, I will be pretty sad and it's gonna suck having my mega blocks and other various Halo Infinite merchandise that I have codes for the game to just sit here and just wait till the game releases. Also, outside of, you know, the player's perspective, it does suck for Halo to no longer being a launch title. This must have been one of the hardest decisions they've ever had to make, considering that Halo 5 was a rushed game and they could have taken this route that Halo Infinite did to ensure that it'd be a better game in the long run. And I think they've learned and I think that's why they're doing it. They want Halo Infinite to succeed, to be this 10 year game and this new platform for Halo to thrive in. Now, outside of the graphical department, which I can't stress enough is probably the main reason why the game is delayed, these are hopes for me personally from the gameplay trailer we've seen, and for modes not to be cut, and for new game modes to possibly flourish in the game, which I'll go ahead and talk about in the next video I have out for you guys. So if you guys enjoy this content and love hearing my thoughts on video games, specifically Halo and Smash Brothers related, consider subscribing. I'm going to start putting a lot of work into this YouTube channel. I actually have two videos that are in the works besides this one, so I'm hoping to go ahead and do weekly content for you guys. With self promos out of the way now, we did hear that Halo Infinite was potentially going to start releasing in fragments just the same way that Halo 5 did and Halo MCC on the PC. Now this could have been just cut content like Forage, Theater, Custom Games, or perhaps even more detrimental things like a complete story from the release or new game modes that were under development and would have actually gone out live, but they just simply didn't have the time for it due to the pandemic and how it affected their workplace. Not having theater, custom games, or forage is pretty detrimental for its longevity in general because this is where a lot of your friends will mess around and spend hours on end just relaxing and talking to each other, just having a good time playing Duck Hunt and sniping that one bimbo that keeps crouching behind all the stupid cement and when you finally get him you call him a P word, not the PR one, the PU one. Even me saying that in that tone and how I was describing it, you know that feeling of what Forge and playing those games does to people. Theater and Forge is also a way to get the game into the spotlight of Reddit, YouTube, and other media that people will look at and see the crazy stuff that Halo has to offer and the fun that everyone is having. It is a way to market your game by you having to do nothing and relying on the community to have a blast. It's a win-win for both parties and it is probably the most effective way. That's why people that stream games like Valorant or Fall Guys is the reason for their huge success. 
What also helps this success is that the game is actually polished and good. The delay will help ensure that Halo Infinite ships with minimal bugs, better hit registration, a better connection, a better user interface, and more polished game modes and AI that we can explore and play with. We can just take a page out of Miyamoto's words and say, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. We're looking at you, Halo 5. The last thing that I truly hope that is actually in Halo Infinite, possibly that it was already going to be there if it wasn't delayed, but I am hoping that there is a large variety of game modes and multiplayer experiences that we can go into from day one. I don't want any cut game modes. I want all of the gear that you wanted to intend for the game to be there and not to be used for DLC later down the line. And what something I would really, really want, and I don't know if they would ever do this, is if we can do custom game matchmaking. The multiplayer of this game is already gonna be free. Since they said there's not gonna be a battle royale from the beginning, having custom game matchmaking would introduce new players to the fun-filled side of Halo. I mean, Halo's all about having fun with your friends, and if you can give them the stupid wacky game modes of Fat Kid, Ice Cream Man, Duck Hunt, Halo, Mongoose Race, so many dumb wacky game modes that I've played for hours on end in my youth. I think it would go a long way in having the game as a variety appeal to a larger audience of people. Now I'm not to say that Halo Infinite is all about having fun with your friends, there's no competitive side to it, of course there is, but I mean if you look at Fall Guys and the recent success it has, you're telling me that's serious? Yet it's so popular as an indie title because of all the wacky stuff that you can do. That's why Among Us is also so popular right now. It is something that you can mess around with your friends and if you want to get into the gameplay of it, you can do so. Custom games matchmaking isn't the only way that this can be solved, but Halo needs to find a balance of appealing to a large audience, and if that has to do with even adding a battle royale down the line, I could very much well see it and I have a very open mind to it. The last thing I briefly want to cover, because we don't have a lot to go off of it, is the multiplayer of Halo Infinite. And I'm talking about social games. Based on what I've heard, Halo Infinite seems to be a great multiplayer, especially with Grappling Hook being an armor ability that you actually have to pick up from the map rather than everyone starts with it. Perhaps Sprint won't be in it, perhaps Sprint will actually be much slower there than in the open world, Slide might not be there, we don't know that much. That's why we needed the beta to assist them with this, and I think we'll still get the beta maybe this year or early next year, but I hope they listen to the community the same way they have been with this game, and I know the way that 343 treats their fans has been incredible over the past couple of years. The fact that they have these games where 343 members are playing Halo 5 and you can get a free skin by running into them in a matchmaking is something that I wish other games did because it makes the players not only look at your social media accounts, but genuinely want to grab an exclusive thing that possibly their friends don't have so then they can brag and talk about that one game and how they played with the game designer that even added the grappling hook. It's just something so cool and unique to be able to talk about those experiences with friends. And with that, I really don't have anything else to say on the delay. I think I've summarized at least my thoughts pretty well here. And I do just want to close this off by saying the next video you should be seeing should be out within a week of this release. And it will be a little bit different for a reason, but then we'll be going back into the same blah, 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 blah. <laughs> going back into the same sorts of content. It's just going to be something that if you want to catch other content of mine, there's another place you can do that. So other than that, I wish you guys the best and I hope you guys are still staying safe during these times. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.